In this lesson, we're going to learn how to construct a pie chart. And the example that we're going to use is a class of 20 students with different hair colors, and we're going to use the pie chart to describe what that classroom looks like in terms of hair colors. And one of the purposes for constructing graphical displays of data is to help people visualize what that data actually looks like. And most of us are visual in terms of how we view things, so it makes it a lot easier. So the first thing that we're going to start off with is taking all this data right here, which is the hair color of the students, which is a type of, of data called categorical data or attribute data. And we're going to categorize that based on uh, the frequency of occurrence. And to save time, what I did is I created a, a table already that summarizes all this information. So we have three students with black hair, six with blonde, eight with brown, three with red. And then we have a total of 20 students out of all those. So 3 plus 6 plus 8 plus 3 is equal to 20. We calculated the relative frequency in this last column, which actually is the percentage of kids with black hair or the percentage with blonde. And the way we get that relative frequency is take 3 and divide it by 20, and that gives us 0.15. 6 divided by 20 gives us 0.3. 8 divided by 20 gives us 0.4. And 3 divided by 20 gives us 0.15. And when we add these up, if we add all the frequencies up, like I said before, that should be 20. And when we add all the relative frequencies up, that should total up to be 1, representing the whole class. When we get started drawing our pie chart, what we need to do is we need to start off with a circle. So let me draw the circle on here real quick. So this is the circle that we're going to use for our pie, just like a pizza. And it's going to be divided up into chunks. And I think one of the easier ways to do this is starting off by uh, putting some increments on here. So what I'd like to start doing is start right here at zero. And remember, in a circle, there's 360 degrees. So that's zero degrees. This would be 90. This would be 180. This would be 270. Our center would be about right here. And I find it easier if we kind of break this into smaller chunks. So I'm going to divide this into increments of 30. So that would be 30, 60, 90. And again, going this way, this would be 30, 60, and 90, 30, 60 and then another 90 and then another 30 and then 60 right here. That way I have some increments that I can work with when I do this. The next thing we need to do is we need to figure out how many degrees we're using up in each one of these categories. When we look at the students with black hair to figure out how many degrees that is, we'd say, okay, 0 0.15 times 360 degrees. And this would give me how many degrees that this category takes up. So 0.15 times 360 is going to be 54 degrees. The next one would be 0.3, which is the blonde hair, times 360 degrees, which equals 108 degrees. And then the next one will be 0.4, representing the brown hair, times 360, is equal to 144 degrees. And the last one I really don't have to do, but I'll do it anyways, is 0.15 for the red times 360 is equal to 54 degrees. Now when I add these up, all these angle measures should add up to be a total of 360 degrees. So that's one way that we can check and we can make sure. So now it's just a matter of dividing up this circle into the segments that we have. So we'll start off with the, the students with black hair. So we're going to start here at about 0 degrees. And these are in 30 degree in increments, so 30, 60. So 54 is probably somewhere right around here. And then it may be easy to do the other 54 degrees right here since we have that. And that's going to end up being somewhere down here. This is going to be just shy of 60 down here. So that's the other 54 degrees right there. Now the last one we have is 108 and 144. Probably the easier one to start with is the 108. So we have 30, 60, 90. This would be 120. So 108 is going to be somewhere between here. And then what's left over would be the 144. So this pi right here is 30% or 108 degrees. This is 15%, or 54 degrees. This is 15%. And then this is 144 degrees, or 40%. So when we look at this pie now, we have an idea of what each one of those are, and we should label those. This would be black, so students with black hair. 
This would be students with red hair. This over here would be students with um, the 30% is blonde. And then this last category down here with the 40% are students with brown hair. Now there's all kinds of neat things we could do. We could have different color pies. We could use Excel to do this to get a more precise diagram. But this is just one way to construct a pie graph. And the reason for doing this is because most of us are visual when we want to represent data. It makes more sense to us when we can see it rather than looking at raw numbers. So a lot of times when we see data represented in a journal article or in the press or, or whatever it is, it's probably going to be in some sort of graphic display. They may use some percentages, but they'll probably show it this way because they know that most people are visual, and this is just a good way to visualize it. So now we can answer questions like, what is the most common hair color in this particular class? Well, you would say it's brown. It's the bigger slice of the pie. You could also ask, what is the least common hair color in this class? And it would either be black or red. They're both the same percentage. So it's, it's actually both of those are the lowest percentage. So it allows us to ask some questions and look at some stuff and get some information visually without having to look at the raw numbers.